Good evening, everybody. This is Juan Ocasio, minister and founder of the House of Truth Christian Ministries out of New York uh, State. I welcome everybody to our weekly prophetic update uh, in which we use the Holy Word of God to explain things that are happening worldwide and to keep uh, in our minds the presence and the coming of the day of the Lord, the coming of the day of wrath of God and the Lamb, and what is our part as a church to wait in expectation with uh, to the return of the Lord and to spread the gospel and to preach it, to teach it, to live it, and above all, to believe it. This is no time for us to play around or to fool around with the Word of God. These are perilous times. We are in the times of the end. There's no denying. And we have to keep an eye open for the events that lead to the coming of Christ, our Savior. But this time he's coming not like a baby in a manger in swaddling clothes. He's coming like a victorious king to execute the judgment of God with the word of God and the church, the body of Christ. We are aware of these situations and the watchmen of the church, which I'm, uh, I feel a privilege to be part of, we are sounding the alarm to the world that we and all of us need to repent from our sins, to turn away from the sins, and to believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that the work that he did on the cross, the finished work on the cross, when he gave his precious life and shed his perfect blood, has provided the means to a reconciliation with God and man, uh, we got and obtained forgiveness of our sins and our names are written in the book of life of God and the Lamb. We are given eternal life in Christ Jesus, a new person in Christ Jesus. We have received the Holy Spirit which in, indwells in us and in the church. And we're part of the body of Christ that will soon be taken up, caught up in the skies to meet the Lord and shortly after uh, during the battle of Armageddon, the Lord will return with his uh, saints as his angels to fight the great dragon, which is Satan the devil, and cast him out into the abyss and destroy his armies and establish his kingdom for, a, for a thousand years. Now, having said that, welcome everybody to our prophetic update. And today is a recap for from the program that we recorded two weeks ago. Uh, unfortunately, due to streaming issues, uh, some of the information may not have been clear. Some verbs, some expressions may not have been clear. The image and sound quality was not the best, so I'm doing a pre-recorded session. Please bear with us as we work in our streaming capabilities. Well, I'm very pleased to uh, do a rerun of this important subject. Hold fast to the confession of your faith. Hold fast to the confession of, of your faith. And because this is one of those signs of the coming of Christ. Hold fast to your confession of faith. What is the confession of faith and why is it so important for the church to keep our confession of faith strong? There are many reasons, but right now, the most crucial reason is found what the Apostle John wrote to his in his three letters and we're going to touch some of the bible verses that are in the letters of john and peter and, and jude and some other uh, writers from the holy bible the house of truth christian ministries based all of his knowledge and teachings in the holy word of god not by the writings or sermons of some other person but the holy word itself and we're doing this by a lot of praying a lot of fasting a lot of, a lot of studying so please feel free to send us messages in the House of Truth Ministries at gmail.com or in our website, houseoftruthministries.com. Amen. So let's go to the second letter of the Apostle John. We're going to read verses 7 through 10. Since John, 2nd John and 3rd John has only one chapter, we don't say chapter 1, verse so. We just read the verses that we need to read. In 2 John, verses 7 to 10, 
and I'm reading from the King James Version. You can follow us with another version of the Bible if you have, but we prefer the old English. And in Spanish, we use the Reina Valera, which is also old Castilian. Let's read the verses 7 to 10. The reason why we have to keep our confession of faith, uh, staying fast on it, is because, as the verse 7 says, for many deceivers, many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. In the times of the Apostle John and the other living apostles, witnesses of the life ministry, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and his ascension back to heaven, and they were entrusted with the declarations and the formal teachings of Jesus Christ when he was in, him, in his three and a half years ministry, they knew that in their time, many will not teach the doctrine of Jesus Christ and the apostles. On the contrary, they were teaching falsehoods that will mislead the people who needed to be saved by the gospel. John said that there were many deceivers that enter into the world. Deceiver is a person that through subtlety of words and uh, alternative teachings or alternative styles of gospel, we're misleading the people into another type of doctrine that was not the biblical doctrine approved by Jesus and the apostles. So many deceivers enter into the world, and the key point here is that they do not confess that Jesus is coming in the flesh. They say that Jesus did not come in the flesh, and that looks like a reflection of Caiaphas and Annas and the Sanhedrin, the, bar, the governing body of, of, of the Jewish people in the times of Jesus, that they saw Jesus doing miracles, they saw his ministry, they knew he resurrected Lazarus and others, that Jesus uh, made water into wine, that they knew Jesus calmed the storms, that Jesus fed thousands with just a few pieces of bread and a few fishes, that Jesus told the good news to the poor, he healed the lepers, he expelled demons, cast out demons, they knew Jesus uh, knew the word of God well. They tried to entrap him. They tried to trap him in situations. They denied the divinity of Jesus as the son of God. They call him a fellow. They did not uh, tolerate when Jesus rebuked them for their religious hypocrisy that the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes who were supposed to be the lawyers and the keepers of the law of Moses, they were actually hypocrites because they did not keep the commandments themselves. On the contrary, they were full of uh, envy, strife, covetousness or desire or greed for positions, for admirations and adulations, but they neglected the poor. They neglected the sinner. When Jesus used to rebuke them, they didn't like what they heard from Jesus. By consequence, they used the political system of Rome to not just capture uh, Jesus, but also to uh, put him like, uh, as an enemy of, of Rome. And Jesus was crucified when Pontius Pilate wanted to release him. Jesus was crucified and uh, and. And shortly after the resurrection, we read in the first uh, chapters of the book of Acts, when Peter, James, uh, John, Andrew, and the other apostles were preaching in Jerusalem, time after time, the, the religious leaders tried to stop the Christians 
early Christians from preaching and teaching in the name of Jesus. They even went far that at the time the Roman soldiers that were in, uh, under the custody or, or guarding the tomb of Jesus where he was, when they declared that the tomb was uh, open and they saw an angel and, and they were afraid, uh, they were bribed with money so they will start saying no the disciples of jesus came and stole the body so they were denying the resurrection of jesus but by denying the resurrection of jesus they weren't just saying that what jesus said and preached was a lie that the life of jesus was not miraculous and what jesus did was nothing uh, great or nothing divine that was the line of thought of the enemies of jesus uh, and at the time of the apostles, when they were old, and they were writing the letters like Paul and Peter and James and John, there were many deceivers that were denying that Jesus came in the flesh, denying that Jesus left the boat of heaven, and he came on the earth, became a human, became a man, and he preached the gospel, and he gave his life in rescue of many for all the world. But they were denying that Jesus came in the flesh. John says that whomever not confess Jesus come in the flesh, he's a deceiver or a liar. And also he wrote an antichrist. The word antichrist, which has been used widely in the Christian community, especially now in the times of the end, when we see the upheaval of nations. And, and civil disobedience and civil wars and, and chaos in the market and the pandemic caused by the COVID-19 and the family disarray and school system broken, lives broken, the, the increase of suicides. And now uh, in this week on, uh, alone, the appearance supposedly of three different monoliths, one in California, one in Utah, one in Romania. And Jesus was telling us about these things. Things that will happen in the times of the end that will be deceiving. So, people of God, do not be deceived by the wonders you will see. Because greater wonders you will see that they will look miraculous. But they are not from God. They are directly from Satan. Revelation chapter 16 said that the false prophet has the power and authority to bring fire from heaven. Of course, it's not from heaven, from the divine throne of God, but a manifestation that is supernatural that will deceive many. But who is the deceiver that wants to deny Jesus coming in the flesh? And John called them Antichrist. Anti in Greek means either in replacement of Christ or against Christ. And they keep point thing is that Christ in he in Greek means the anointed one which uh, an, a, an equivalent of the Hebrew word Mashiach or Messiah means the anointed one anointed by God when Jesus was uh, baptized in the Jordan River the Holy Spirit dwelled on him and everybody heard the voice from the Father say this is my beloved son in whom I'm, I am well pleased we have to know these things, people of God, because there are many deceivers in the times of John denying the existence of Jesus or denying the divinity of Jesus. And so it is today. These are deceivers or liars and antichrists. They try to replace the doctrine of Jesus and the apostles into demonic teachings. But let's read more about it. John said that whomever doesn't bring this doctrine or the doctrine of Jesus coming in the flesh to die for our sins and to justify us by his resurrection, he said, do not be them gossiping. Do not allow them in your house. Do not allow them in your ears or your eyes. Do not allow this propaganda that is deceiving to be in your house. Do not let it enter your eyes or your ears or stay in your heart or mind because it will corrupt you. It will mislead you into the path of the broad way that will lead you to hell. You have to stand on the doctrine of Christ and the apostles. And Jesus came in the flesh to give his life for us. And Jesus is the Son of God. He's the life. He's the way. He's the truth. Is the resurrection and all the miracles he did and all the gospel that he preached 
was evidence of his authority from heaven and on earth and that his life really brought us back to the Father through him only. So we have to be careful because John said, if you even bid in God's spirit, if you say hi to them, and you know the teaching false doctrine, you become a partaker or an accomplice of their sin. Just like a, a, a person in a, in, a, in a car just waiting for the robbers to rob a bank. And after robbing the bank, they get in the car, that person drives away. That person exactly goes to jail because although he was not the robber or the killer, he was an accomplice of murder or robbery. By saying this, I'm telling you, do not allow false doctrine that is not biblical into your life, into your house, into your family. Don't let anything that is deceiving or lying into your life. And if you know that somebody in your family or the church or somewhere is teaching a doctrine that is not biblical, don't even partake on them. Don't even argue with them. Don't partake in any debates with them. And there was a, 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 an incident in, in the, the Apostle John mentioned in, in, in his third letter about diatrophies. Uh, it's supposedly brother in the church. Look at what he said. Third John chapter uh, verses nine through eleven, uh, John wrote, "I wrote on, unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receive it us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, trading against us with malicious words, and not content uh, therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would." and casteth them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. So sound doctrine does good, especially to the brethren. And there's this man, Diotrephes, who supposedly be a brother, perhaps an elder in the church, does not receive the uh, apostles or those sent by apostles from Jerusalem, where was the, the apostles, ba basically the headquarters located, they did not receive him. And he expels anybody from the local church who tried to be hospitable to them. Most likely he didn't want to change the way he was doing because John said that he liked to pray against the apostles. So he was talking bad about uh, bad mouthing the apostles or the way things were done. Uh, in the congregation through the governing body of, of, of the apostles. But also, he also liked to have the preeminence among, among them. And James was very, very direct when he said that if in our church we see a brother or somebody who comes well-dressed well with gold and jewels, and you put him in the front, and then you see somebody with, with evil clothes, that means it's a poor-looking and maybe a beggar or a person of very poor resources, and you say, I sit down there on, on, on the corner, then we have um, prejudice based on, on on social status or money status. And don't let it be so. Jesus, the Son of God, in the Last Supper, he took on his clothes and he dressed himself like a servant. And he washed the feet of sinners. His apostles, he washed their feet. He being God on earth, and, and he washed the feet of sinful men. And Jesus told us to wash the feet of others. Jesus told us to be hospitable with us. He told us to be humble with us. He told us to be welcoming with us. But we have to bear in mind that we cannot allow false doctrine to enter the church or into, into our families or into our lives. We cannot beat them good speed. We cannot have association with people who are greedy of power or greedy or selfishness. In the church, because that is a deceiving spirit that causes division and rumors and memories and grumblings, and the Holy Spirit will depart from the church. And if the Holy Spirit departs from the church, the devils come in and wreak havoc in the church until order is restored in the Holy Spirit. So, yes, the Apostle John is telling that many people were denying Jesus in his time, that Jesus came in the flesh, and there are now people who like power, ambitious of power, and do not listen to the apostles and to the teachings of the apostles and Jesus Christ. There's a food for thought for the church right now and into our very own households. 
There is no excuse not because there is a COVID-19 and the church itself as a big body cannot gather themselves together. But we in our homes, we have to still preach the sound doctrine. And whomever doesn't preach that Jesus came in the flesh, this antichrist is against Christ or try to replace the, the sound doctrine. Amen. So let's bear this in mind. Now let's go to the Apostle Jude, who's actually his name is Judas, but to make a decision from Judas Iscariot, who betrayed Jesus. And this Judas, who's Thaddeus, or Thaddeus, his name was changed to Jude. Let's read verses 3 and 4. Let's see what he said. And he wrote to the church, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, that's sound doctrine, our salvation is in Christ. It was needful for me to write unto you and to and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Let me read that part. That ye, that's an individual, ye, you as an individual brother and sister, should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of all ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now Jude just like John is sounding the alarm that there are men who crept in the church unawares that people believe they were saved, converts of, to Christianity, that they will deny God and deny our Lord Jesus Christ and they take the grace of God into lasciviousness. How many times we have seen news and reports that church members, especially pastors and bishops or people of authority in the church, have been caught up committing adultery or homosexuality or pedophilia in the churches. And they have been exposed because Jesus said what is in the dark will come up to the light. So these are men that have been crept on, uh, unawares uh, by the church. They have not been monitoring in, in prayer. And they have crept in the church. And when Jesus said that a little leaven, a little leaven corrupt the whole, the whole dough. The church has, must be unleavened of the false teachings of the Pharisees. Who stuck to the letter of the law, but not to the essence of the law, which is mercy. Or, or like the Sadducees, Sadducees who did not believe in the resurrection. That was also anti-biblical. Likewise, today we have seen these type of men that come into the church teaching false doctrine like the um, prosperity gospel. That everything that God has for you is here and right now. And you and you and you is all about you. Even in the praise songs, it's all about you. But what about Jesus? What about Christ? Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, deny yourself. And I put in one of my uh, earlier videos, if we want to check in my YouTube channel, it is there. You, we have to deny ourselves, not to exalt ourselves. Jesus said, we have to be humble, not to exalt ourselves. Whomever is exalted will be abased, will be humble. Well, those who humble themselves will be exalted. I prefer to be humble now and to be exalted by my God in the time of the end than me thinking, okay, Brian, about I'm a child of God and I'll do this, I deserve this, I deserve that. And then the Lord uh, abates me or takes my name away because I was teaching and believing a false doctrine. Beware of the prosperity gospel. Beware of, of, of these new trends that women can be pastors. When Peter and another apostle said that, even Paul said that the man is the head of the house and the man is the head of the church. Christ is the head of the church and the man is the head of the family. The man is the head of the woman. So any other doctrine contrary to this doctrine 
is anti-biblical, anti-Christ. Beware of these things. Amen. So the sense of urgency from both Jude and John was prevalent in the times where they were living. How much more to us that we are witnessing the end of this world. The witness, we are witnessing all the signs of prophecy that Jesus, the apostles and the prophets prophesied that will happen and will continue to happen until the coming of Christ and even after. Let's go to the first letter of the Apostle John, chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 18 and 19. Very important. G uh, John said that whomever denies the Son coming of the Father or coming of the flesh is a deceiver and antichrist. Look at what John also said in the first letter that has his name. 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. So interesting that John said that in these days it is the last hour. He was referring to the last hour, the last times of the apostles, being John the oldest. The apostles were fading away. They're falling asleep in Christ. They were dying. Those witnesses who witnessed Jesus' resurrection 500 at a time, they started to die out decades after Jesus' resurrection and ascension to the heaven. So he knew that this is the last time. The, the, the restraining in the time of John where the apostles and, 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 and the headquarters that they had in Jerusalem, they were in, in imparting and teaching the sound doctrine of Christ and the apostles, and they were fading away into sleep. They were going to sleep in the Lord. And he was making an emphasis that it is the last hour because the enemy now is creeping in. Satan is creeping in demonic teachings to subvert the faith, to uh, corrupt the faith of Christ and the teaching. And now he said that although the Christians knew that an Antichrist will come, a replacement Christ or the enemy of Christ, opposite to Christ, will come. There were many Antichrists. By that reason alone, it is the last hour, uh, John said. But where did they come from? In verse 19, John said that they came from us. They came from the body of Christ. They came from the body of believers. They believed Jesus came from heaven. They used to believe that Jesus came on the flesh, that he was born of a virgin, that he was born miraculously, that he survived the, the, the genocide of Herod, that he went to Egypt. They knew that Jesus was going to be born in Bethlehem. They knew that Jesus will, will become a Nazarene. They knew that Jesus would be the light in Capernaum and Naphtali and Zebulun. They knew the prophecies applied to him. They knew the, the, the prophecies uh, out of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 53 about this humble servant of God, about the, the, the Psalm 22, I'm going to talk it in a little bit, about him being hurt and Zechariah also, that they will see him that trespass him. But now John is saying that antichrists, many antichrists came out of the church. But we're not of the church body because if they were stay, remain steadfast in the doctrine of Christ and apostle, they will have remained loyal. But now they are having their own opinions and their own gospels, and they went out of the church. They didn't like the way the church was run by the apostles. They they wanted to make a, a, a service of their own, whichever was the reason they left the church, and they're, now they're deceiving many. And corrupting the message of the gospel. Amen. 
Verse 22 and 23 of the same chapter 2. Look at what John said. Actually, let me read from 20 to 23. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, or anointing, and ye know all things. He's talking about the brethren. He's talking about the church. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is, in, is, is of the truth. No lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is an antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. Whosoever denies the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. So John was saying that the church knows the truth. Jesus says, I am the truth and the way and the life. No body comes to the Father but by through me. Jesus says, I am the living waters. Jesus says, I am the Christ. Jesus says, I am the Messiah. I am the anointed by God to save mankind. There's no other Savior but Jesus Christ. Whomever denies this is Antichrist and a liar. Because he denies the Son and the Father. Because Jesus said, the Father and I are one. When uh, uh, Thomas told Jesus after his resurrection... Uh, Jesus show us the Father and Jesus told him you be with me all this time and you have not yet seen me whomever seen me has seen the Father because the Father and I are one the Father is God Jesus is God and the Holy Spirit is God whomever denies this fundamental teaching is a liar and Antichrist opposes to the true teaching of Christ and he tries to replace this doctrine to other doctrines, just like the Pope said that all people go to heaven, that Joe also said that gay people will be in heaven. That's a lie because no abomination can inherit the kingdom of God. Paul wrote it in Romans chapter 1. No sinner will be allowed in heaven unless he's saved by the Lord Jesus. The unjust will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. This is sound doctrine. Amen. So, whomever denies Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the Messiah, that he was prophesied from Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, till Zechariah and beyond, then he's a liar and antichrist. He will not have God. But the church knows, he said, because the church knows the truth. And if you, brother, and you, sister, are aware of the truth, of the, of the doctrine of Jesus and the apostles, you know that homosexuality is a sin, it's an abomination in the eyes of the Lord, adultery is an abomination in the eyes of the Lord, stealing is an abomination in the eyes of the Lord, on fair scales, so that means bad business or usury or a killing or envy it is a violation of God's commandments, but above all, idolatry and witchcraft. Or atheism, which uh, don't believe in God. Or people who do not believe in the resurrection. Or people who do not believe in the miracles Jesus executed on earth. Denies Jesus as the Christ and denies the Father who sent the Christ. We have to understand these are signs of the end. If it was imperative in the times of John and uh, imperative in the times of Jude. Even more so to us who are witnessing everything that the Lord prophesied it will happen and continues to happen in the end of days, in the end times. John goes further. Not just there are liars and deceivers who dis deny Jesus coming in the flesh or those who deny Jesus as the Christ, but he also went further. In the chapter 4, verses 1 to 3, John wrote, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out uh, into the world. Many false prophets are gone out into the world. John said that they came from the church. There is antichrists who deny the son, who knew the truth, and now they believe a lie. Verse 2 says, Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. 
And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Third time he mentioned it. Whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is in the world. Let me make a summary of all this. John mentions Antichrist in three different ways. He mentions that there's one, the so-called Antichrist, the Antichrist, the person imbued by Satan, the devil himself, that it, according to Bible studies, he will come at the time the third temple is built. And after the three and a half years of the covenant with men, according to Daniel chapter 9, he will come and enter the Holy of Holies. And he, he will sit in the mercy seat and he will declare himself God. We know that as fact, prophetic fact that will happen in the future. When? I do not know. I just keep watch. Jesus told us to watch. Watch and pray. But also, John said that there are many antichrists that deny the Father, coming out, uh, Jesus coming on the flesh and denying Jesus as the Christ. So there's a, an antichrist as a human and devil at the same time. This is the deceiver, the son of perdition, the man of lawlessness. That's the first, second, there are many antichrists. These antichrists came from the body of Christ. Rebels that came, in, uh, came out of the body of Christ and teach, I keep, it, I, I keep on teaching false doctrines. Like ordaining gays and lesbians to, uh, into office. All these things. It's not his speech, it's the truth. It's Bible truth that we're teaching here. So those are antichrists, or they're trying to replace the doctrine of Christ and apostle, or try to make new ones, make it more appealing to the masses. But not to the people, to be repent of their sins, be converted into the gospel, and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Some, pe some, some people are preaching now that you don't have to confess sins, that you don't need to confess sins. Or some people that say that all churches lead to God. All churches lead to God. All beliefs lead to God. Buddhism lead, lead to God. Islam leads to God. Tribal worship, idol worship, nature worship, self-worship is acceptable. Those are false doctrines. Do not allow them in your house. Do not allow them in your life. Do not even bid them uh, God's speed. If you know they came from the body of Christ once. Do not be particular in the sense. And there's a third type of Antichrist, he says, that the spirit of Antichrist. And that's a spirit that we know that is a work. How do we know it's a work? Well, if we go to one of the letters of the Apostle Paul, is the second letter of the Thessalonians. Paul gives more information about it. Second Thessalonians. Let me see if first or second. 2 Thessalonians, on the chapter 2, the Apostle Paul wrote this, and uh, we're going to read from verse 1. Now, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, so the church believes in the coming of Jesus Christ. If your church is not preaching that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon, get away from it. Get away from that church. Go to a, the body of Christ that believes in the return bodily return of Jesus Christ. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, he's talking about the rapture, that ye be not soon shaken in mind. That means remain steadfast or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as the day of the Lord is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, the coming of Christ shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the, that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The falling away, in English is a two word, falling away. In the Greek language is called apostasia. Actually, the word is transliterated to Spanish, apostasia, which means an open rebellion to the doctrine of Jesus and apostles. Open rebellion. And that man of sin will be revealed, the son of perdition is the Antichrist. 
Verse 4 says, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And look at verse 7. 6 and 7. And now ye know what we hold it, that he might be revealing his time. What we hold the Antichrist from rising. The Holy Spirit and the church. Who preach the truth. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let. Until he be taken out of the way. Verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed. The Antichrist. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Verse 9. Look at this. This is all prophetic. And this may be happening pretty soon. Even him. Whose coming is after the working of Satan. With all powers and signs and lying wonders. What did I say? Revelation 13 said that the false prophet can cast fire from heaven to deceive the very elect. So these antichrists will come with power of Satan to, ca to perform signs and land wonders like miracles. Wonders is uh, equivalent to miracles. He will try to emulate miracles done by Jesus to deceive many. Look at what verse 10 says. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish... Those that perish are the unbelievers, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause shall they shall let me say that again. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Amen. This is a reality of, uh, of what we're going now. The, the spirit of the Antichrist, the Lord is refraining the spirit of Antichrist and all is deception and all is lawlessness. Although we see a lot of lawlessness happening, a lot of violence and crime rates and all this uh, fulfillment of prophecy, there's a more coming. It's going to get worse. It's not going to, I wish I could say it's going to get better. It's going to get much worse because once the Holy Spirit is moved out of the way. And who has the Holy Spirit? The church is moved out of the way. We'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the sky. The spirit of Antichrist will run rampant on earth. And people who are not saved, those who are left behind, will believe the lies of Satan because now they're hopeless. My family, my father, my mother, or my brother, my sister, my pastor, the church is gone. Now they're going to try to find a solution to, 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 to fill the void of the family left behind because they were to meet the Lord. They, they don't understand it. They can't quantify or, or understand the prophecies. And they're going to believe to every single lie the devil is going to throw at them because he's going to show them miracles of whatever kinds. When the, John said that fire is going to be brought down from heaven by the false prophet so they can believe the Antichrist, the man of perdition, is going to happen. One way or another, the church, we will be out of here. Praise God. We'll be gone to meet the Lord in heaven. But unfortunately, those who are not standing in the love of truth will be uh, receive a strong delusion. What is that love of truth? Let's read what Jesus said in John chapter 3. When Jesus was talking to the Nicodemus. A, a, a Pharisee who went to see Jesus in the night because he was afraid of, of, of his colleagues. Jesus wrote this, uh, said this that is written in John. John 3.16, now we understand. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the law, the truth of love of God. The love of truth. Because God loved mankind. As his image, he made Adam. But his fallen condition due to Adam's sin. 
from the beginning. God still loved his creation. And he sent his only begotten son. Jesus became only begotten when he was the first. He, uh, when he was born perfect on earth. Sinless on earth. And he came to give his life. So no one should perish if we believe. Excuse me, that Jesus is the Son of God. And he gave his life for us because of the love of God. He offered us eternal life, everlasting life through Jesus. If we believe in Jesus. Look at what verses 17 and 18 says. It has a lot to do with our confession of faith. For God sent not the Son into the world to condemn the world. Back then. But that the world through him might be saved. Verse 18. He that believeth not. He that believeth on him is not condemned. For he that believeth not is condemned already because he had not believed the name of the only begotten Son of God. Who's the name? Jesus Christ. So if somebody tells you that God has no son, or none of us can become sons and daughters of God, that goes against these very verses. Jesus told Nicodemus. Because the love of God is so that whomever believe in the name of Jesus. And believe in what Jesus did. And have everlasting life with the Father. Whomever does not believe it is condemned. But we who believe, who we know. We know the truth. We have to be able to discern the false teachings, the false doctrines, and demonic teachings. Paul said that even an angel comes from heaven with another gospel that is not in the word of God. Let him be accursed. That's how serious it is. So the devil is always being busy, even from the time of Jesus and the apostles, to corrupt the church, corrupt the doctrine. He even tried to use the scriptures against Jesus when he was tempting Jesus. He re was reciting from Psalm uh, of Jesus when he challenged Jesus to throw himself down from the uh, high part of the temple. And he tried to use the Psalms. All the, he was saying the angels that you will not, not dash a fool against a stone. And Jesus used the same word of God to rebuke the devil twice. The people of God, the church knows the truth. Jesus came by the love because of the love of the Father. It was so that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to be the Christ, to be the Messiah, to give his life in propitiation for the sins of all. But for those who believe in the name of Jesus will have everlasting life. Those who don't believe in Jesus are already condemned. They will have damnation in the lake of fire. They don't, they, they don't repent now and they die. They go to hell. They will go to hell. And after that, they will be called up from hell to face the white throne of judgment of God, according to Revelation chapter 20, and be cast into the lake of fire forevermore. Those are truths that we believe, and those are the truths that we have to preach. We still have to preach that hell is hot. The lake of fire is even hotter. There's no escaping it. That God's judgment is perfect and fair and just. And the only way to the Father is Jesus. Not a ceremony, not an enchantment, not another religion, not another path or alternate path to God. That sin is still sin and you have to repent from your sins. And you have to recognize Jesus and accept him as your Lord and personal Savior. If your church is not teaching these things, get out. If they put in yourself uh, above all things, and uh, everything revolves around you, get out. Because Jesus told us to deny ourselves and humble ourselves to God. And to one another. Amen. We have to understand the, the word of truth, the love of truth from God that is in Jesus because any other doctrine is anti-Christ, is anti-Christian.
And we don't be, we don't want to be counted as anti or against Christ or try to replace Christ with a, a theology of ours because if it's not in the Bible, don't accept it. Examine the scriptures. Whoever says something and sounds good, sounds hip, sounds up to date, share the scriptures. And prayer and fasting and much supplication for God to let you understand the difference between the truth and the lie and what is of Christ and what is of the devil. And this is one of the signs of the truth of the sound doctrine of Christ. Let's go back to John, 1 John chapter 4. And we're going to read verses 7 and 9. Actually, let's, let's read verse 6. We are of God, that's the church. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. That means the apostles. He that is not of God heareth us not. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that lo loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Verse 10 Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us first and sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. The church knows the truth about the reasons why God sent His only begotten Son, Jesus, to be the Christ, to be the Messiah. He will be a propitiation for us. He put Himself instead of us. He took all our sins on him he was a curse and he was slashed and he became sin and a curse for us so we could be redeemed rescued and, and and sanctified for the lord and his resurrection declared us just because it was god's justice that something has to be equal to replace what was lost adam who was perfect he was made of the earth God breathed on his nostrils the breath of life. He became a living soul. He was the first man. He was perfect in all his ways until he failed and disobeyed God. So the, the justice of God has to be balanced. So Jesus left his position in heaven and became a perfect man, just like Adam, but unlike Adam, in the worst of circumstances where any human being could have been, Jesus remained obedient to death, to the death. And by doing that, when he died and he was raised on the third day, now he took back from Adam. He took us back. We've been repurchased by the blood of Christ. Now we no longer live in condemnation and under the power of sin that causes death. But now we under grace and we live through faith. Because it's through our faith of the grace of God through Jesus is when we are saved. These are truths that we anchor our daily lives and this is the sound doctrine that we must preach and this is the sound doctrine that we must keep and not allow any other teaching to infiltrate in the church. I sound like a broken disc because churches are allowing these demonic teachings to infiltrate in the church and we see in it that the church is becoming a part. Racially divided. It's becoming monetarily divided. There's a quote, quote, church that is all inclusive. Includes all sinners without repentance. Allows all sins and glorifies them. And this few bunch that preaches that the, the word of God is true, that the Bible is the infallible, eternal word of God, that we shall abide by the word of God only, that we believe in the literal interpretation of the Bible. 
and that Jesus is Christ, that he gave his life for us, and he will destroy those who keep on sinning. And there's a judgment for those who don't believe in him. The wheat and the tears are finally blooming, and Jesus said by the fruits, you will know them. So the times of the Antichrist coming, many Antichrists are here, and the spirit of Antichrist is here. So the church must remain vigilant, must remain preaching the gospel, and be aware about the coming, and feel and have this sense of urgency about the coming of Christ. If you're not dynamic, if you're not moved by all these events and you have to get your life closer to God and you don't spread the gospel and your testimony, you could be easily be dissuaded and lose your name in the book of life and you fall off from the grace of God and believe anything else that is not the true gospel of Jesus Christ and the doctrines of Jesus and the apostles. Amen. Jesus said it very many times in the prophecies of the end that he was teaching the apostles. Prior to his uh, betrayal and, and crucifixion, Jesus said there will be many false prophets. Many will uh, be offended. Many uh, false Christs and false prophets will came will come. And Jesus told, told us not to believe them. Jesus even said, what is written in Matthew 24, 26, if they said Christ is in the desert, don't go and meet him. Or if he's in the inner rooms, don't go. And Jesus said, why? Because just as lightning comes from the east and shines into the west, Jesus will be seen. The angels that uh, witnessed to the apostles and the disciples when Jesus came up from heaven in, in the book of Acts chapter 1, they said, Jesus, the way, same way you saw him go, he will come. Revelation chapter 1, he is coming in the clouds and all eyes will see him. That's part of our sound doctrine. Unfortunately, there are some people at the Jehovah's Witness, they said that Jesus already came. That he is not coming, it's his presence. But that's not sound doctrine because the Bible said that he's coming in the clouds. And all eyes will see him, even those who pierce him. And that's in, 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 in fulfillment of the prophecy of Zechariah chapter 12, when Jehovah, God, he wrote a, by inspiration through Zechariah, they will see me, says the Lord, who they trespass. So Jesus in the New Testament is the same as Jehovah in the Old Testament. I have said it before. There are many, many Bible verses that Jesus applied unto himself that was exclusively of the Father. Amen. Like I said, he's coming in the in, in the skies. Now, what are we supposed to do as Christians in this time? Seeing since we are already seeing the, the fulfillment of all the prophecies of what remains. The tribulation, the great tribulation, and the third temple being uh, built, and the Antichrist will be desecrated, and the one world government, the one world religion, the one the one world uh, economy, all this is coming uh, into effect. It's happening as we speak. In in uh, I think it's in Austria. In summer in 2021, there will be what is called the Great Reset. Financial reset in all levels, in all countries, including America. The president of Canada already used the word do it reset in his own country. And those who oppose, they will put him in intern camps. That's another word for concentration camps. If you don't believe me, look into the news releases uh, from Canada. And you know what I'm talking about. States like Canada, uh, like California, Oklahoma, New York. They're threatening to, to sanction the church, keeping closed, but they can allow uh, strip clubs and, and allow illegal drugs to be legalized and allow immorality like pedophilia be manifested and be shown in Netflix. 
But the church cannot sing a song to the Lord and they cannot preach the gospel. We are not allowed to preach in the streets. We're not allowed to gather into our, uh, the building for worship. But you can allow revolts and riots and destruction of private and public property uh, without consequence and, and defunding the police. That's the spirit of Antichrist and the spirit of lawlessness. Just imagine what happened when the church and the Holy Ghost is caught up in the heaven and we are raptured. More lies and wonders are coming this way. Many volcanoes are erupting at accelerated pace, major earthquakes, I watch them daily. People are in fear of the things that are happening, even in our own families, in my own backyard. Schools are starting to shut down or classes starting to shut down because people are getting sick. But then people say we can do it together. But they are not repenting from their sins. They're not acknowledging Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. They say we can do this together as one global family, but there's no God. But there will come somebody who claims that he's God and people will fall in droves after him. Because they want to have a, a God they can see. Just like Israel, when Moses went in this Mount Sinai to commune with God 40 days and 40 nights, they said, we want to have a God we can see. And in the times of Samuel, do we want to have a king we can see? When Samuel told them, God is your king. Man can always want to have something in replacement of the true living God. Paul said, we walk by faith, not by sight. I believe in all the miracles that happened in Egypt. I believe all the miracles of Jesus Christ. I never witnessed them. I'm 2,000 years after Christ and now 3,500 years after Moses. I believe every single miracle that is written in the word of God. And I believe in the love of God has saved me through Christ Jesus because I repented from my sins and I gave my life to the Lord and I serve him as a minister a servant not like somebody who has a, to wear a badge or a crown or have rule or uh, rulership of, or, over others no that's not the calling I receive the Lord told me you're a watchman and you're gonna Sound alarm that I'm coming soon, that my people have to be ready. We have to be watchful and alert and we're going to fall asleep because the enemy is trying to attack the church left and right. From within and from the outside. The devil are doing a great, he's doing a great job trying to take man as, uh, out, as, uh, out from the family as the head. Trying to put the children uh, as the center of the family when in reality it's God, the center of the family. Then man, and then the, fam the woman and the family. That's the right order, says the Bible. People are fighting for positions of, uh, on church, fighting over resources, over money, or, or, or tithing and offerings, uh, so they can have a, a better car, a better house, airplanes, and all that stuff. That is contrary to what Jesus did. Jesus didn't even have a place to dwell his head. We have to remain steadfast. First John chapter four, verses 10 to 16. John said, hearing his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. We have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God had to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. That is our confession as a body of Christ. That's our confession of faith. 
Peter, uh, uh, just like John, and Jude, he prophesied that there will be people who, like in the times of John, would deny the Father. He would They would deny the Son coming of the Father, and he, they would deny Jesus coming on the flesh. In Second Peter, in his second letter, we read uh, chapter 3, verses 1 to 4, and it reads, this second epistle, be, uh, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles, that's the doctrine of the apostles, of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days, and we are in the last days, are we? Scoffers. Walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the Father fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Right now, the church is preaching that Jesus is coming, that Jesus is coming, that Jesus is coming. He's coming soon. He's coming like a thief in the night. Church, be ready. Church, be holy. Church, be prepared. And many people, our co-workers or some family members, and sometimes even ourselves, we might be doubting about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But Peter said, we have to be mindful of the coming of uh, the Lord. And there will be mockers, people who will be laughing at us. Look at that church. Uh, they still are holding on that Jesus is coming when Jesus is not even real. Or even worse, we are being persecuted in many countries, even in the States. Because we hold fast to the belief that the Lord is coming. That is a key turning point for the belief of the Christian. Because we know that the Bible, the Holy Bible, is the only book of prophecy. That we know that Jesus is the only Lord and Savior. That we know that He's coming back. That we know that He's going to destroy the earth and the inhabitants of it. He's going to create new heavens and new earth where righteousness shall dwell. We know there's going to be a day of judgment. We know that hell and, and the seas and everybody who's there will resurrect to a, 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 a resurrection of judgment. And they will be departing from hell into the lake of fire. We know that. So people are still laughing, making, making fun of us. And every time we mention the mark of the beast, uh, they make fun of us. Uh, we tell them about something about Jesus. They mock us. They laugh at us. Yes, they're scoffers. And that's a sign of the end. Amen? So we have to be aware of all these things. But this is not the end. Because the church we're going to be rewarded. Amen? We are, what I say, we are in the 11th hour. We are in the times that it will be the most blessed time for the church. Here in, in Thessalonians, the chapter 4, First of Thessalonians chapter 4. Chapter 4, let's read verses 17 to 18. From 13 to 18. Look at what Paul said. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep or dead in the Lord, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this way we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, we, which are alive and remain, shall be cut up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with his words. Yes, there will be a time when the Lord shall come from heaven and with a shout and the trumpet of God and the 
command of the archangel, those who are dead in Christ will rise first and in a, a will, the church will be raptured. People will say, oh, the word rapture is not in the Bible. Correct? In Greek. Because the word of the verb that means caught up is harpazo. But when it was transliterated into Latin, the word is rapturio. A snatch away, a cut away. Rapturio. Therefore, the word rapture does is in the Bible, but from the uh, Latin source. Amen. So then don't be dissuaded to not believe in the rapture. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul also said in verses 51 through 58, and these are my last verses for the night, Paul wrote, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, just like, just like he wrote in, in First Thessalonians. For this corruptible, this body, this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O great, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the exhortation from me to you. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We have contained for the faith, we have contained for the uh, Christian and apostolic doctrine, and we have to remain steadfast, we have to remain immovable. How do you remain steadfast and, in, and, and unmovable? To, by standing on the rock, which is Jesus. Do not depart from the doctrine of Jesus. Jesus left heaven and become a, became a man on earth, and he gave his precious life on the cross and we receive the uh, uh, forgiveness of sin and we receive everlasting life by believing in the name of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and the Christ or Messiah and he uh, was the propitiation so he has changed himself for us and he raised was raised on the third day he was resurrected on the third day and he's sitting on the right hand of the Father he's coming to judge the living and the dead but before that happens he will rapture his church and the Antichrist will show up in the world scene. And during the great tribulation period, Jesus is going to destroy him and the false prophet, prophet and send him into the lake of fire. And after destroying all the enemies in Armageddon, protecting those uh, Jewish Israeli that believe in Christ at his coming, then we'll start a, 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 his one, uh, 1,000 or millennial kingdom on earth. And after that, eternity with the Lord. Eternity. A brand new day. For those whose name are written in the book of life. I have a question for you. Is your name written in the book of life? Are you sure of your calling? Are you sure of your salvation? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you believe in what the apostles thought about Jesus Christ? That the love of God was great. That he sent his only begotten son. So you don't perish, but have everlasting life. Do you believe in the everlasting life? Or do you believe in a doctrine that just live a good life here and there's nothing else? Or do you believe all religions will point to the same God? Or we all worship the same God? When Jesus said there's only one. And there's only one way to the Father. But, and it's by Christ. Is your church body teaching sin? and repentance of sin? Is the church preaching and teaching about hell? Who goes to hell? Or who can be spared from hell? Is the church preaching about repentance of sin? 
or you're going to be okay, come as you are and never change? Think about those things. Does your church believe and teach that this is the word of God, that it doesn't contain uh, mistakes, that is not allegorical, that everything that is written did pass and happen and will happen? Think about those things. Remain true to the confession of faith that was given to the apostles, to Christ Jesus. I believe in everything that the word of God says. And I'm living it, and I believe it, and I'm willing, I'm willing to die for Christ. Are you? Hold on to your confession of faith, because at the time of Jesus Christ coming, you're going to be rewarded. We already receive eternal life. We just need to cash it in at His time. We got a rain check 2,000 years ago, paid in full. Our sins paid in full. Our judgment paid in full. Now we live for Christ. Not just believe, but we live and we die for Christ. If I die for Christ, we gain because we already got everlasting life. Amen. So hold on to the confession of your faith. Hold on tight. The Lord is coming soon and He's going to take us home. Have a good night.